Hello, Gorman. How you doing today? Good. Good. And uh, I just want to say thank you for coming out to the Ontario Festival of, Festival of Arts today. Hope you're having a good time. Thank you. I'm going to start off. Um, what is your background? Well, I am retired after 37 years as an educator, most of it in Ontario, and, um, and I am a museum educator on staff at the Norton Simon. I do volunteer at the Getty and the Huntington, and uh, I now work as a full-time artist. Perfect. Uh, tell me a little, bit, a little bit about your body of work. I am a non-objective abstractionist. Um, I really believe in um, not recreating what's already been created. Um, so uh, my, my work is original and I hope each person that looks at it finds their own, uh, their own self in it. Um, and um, I am a queer artist and um, the attributes of queer art are vulnerability and uh, contradiction and a little suffering. And there's a few other things, but that's enough to get started with when you look at art from a queer artist. Perfect. Uh, what is, so I'm saying, what inspires your creativity? I think I've always had something to say and sometimes words aren't enough to express um, oneself. And I was the kid at about age seven. It wasn't selling lemonade. I was selling watercolors for three cents. And I would use my garage as a studio. And I would hang out my work with clothespins on a clothesline. So I guess um, if there's such a thing as just being born to be an artist, I suppose that's what you would look for. And when did you know you're an artist? When, you, when did you first start drawing or, you know, doing art, basically? Um, for me, um, I think everyone's story is going to be different. Um, but, but for me, I became an artist when I stopped hearing voices that told me I wasn't. Um, uh, again, I was that little kid that wanted to um, paint. Um, and um, growing up in North Dakota, being an artist probably wasn't going to uh, get a, uh, you away from the farm. Mm -hmm. and, and that's literal. So um, I, I heard at least what I thought were other voices that told me that that wasn't what I should be doing. Um, I went into education because, oh, I, built, I love learning, mm -hmm. and I believe in um, learning, and I believe that's a way to change the world, but art is also a way to change the world. Mm -hmm. So I think I've gone from one way to change the world to another, but um, finally I stopped listening, and I think retirement was that time where I thought I actually don't have to listen to what I think the voices are that I have to be practical, um, and I have to um, make sure that I am doing something that's valued by other people's standards. I can just decide that I value it by my own standards. And that's kind of the joy, one of the many joys of retirement. Okay. So what's your motivation to create? I, I think there's a lot more stories in me. There's a lot more I'd like to say. Um, as an educator, our jobs are to serve. And so our jobs are to promote other people. And um, with retirement came a time where I thought, you know what, I actually can have my own voice. Uh, and I can actually promote my own ideas. Um, so uh, it's, it's a great form to be able to do that. And um, with that voice, it's still changing the world. Like an educator changes the world by giving other people voice. Perfect. Uh, what's your strongest influence in your work? 
I have to give a lot of credit to my private art teacher, which I was able to afford in more ways than one with the pandemic. So three years ago, I already knew how to do Zoom before we went um, on lockdown mm -hmm. because Europe went to lockdown before we did. And I networked with museums. So I was familiar with how to work online. And so when, the, when we went into quarantine, um, I contacted the California Art Club and said, I want to go online and get a private teacher, teacher mm -hmm. because I wasn't spending money on travel. Mm -hmm. I wasn't spending money on um, all the things we were spending money on. And um, so I thought, I'm going to give myself the luxury of a private teacher. So I got someone from um, Ukraine um, and she taught me one-on-one -on -one from the very get-go of what I was doing right, what I needed to do better. And um, that made um, a big difference in my ability to be able to, um, to express myself in a way that I'm proud of. I think before I had that opportunity, I think I was questioning mm -hmm. what I was doing so strongly that I didn't wouldn't have the courage, confidence to be able to put myself up front like I'm doing today. Mm -hmm. um, and it was that art teacher um, who is, um, I should give her just a, a little bit of a, of a background. Um, young woman in um, now she's in living in the United States for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, she was able to get an emergency visa when the war broke out, but she was identified as gifted in fifth grade in Ukraine and mm -hmm. via the government attended art schools in St. Petersburg, Russia, Florence, Italy, um, Copenhagen and Paris. And so I got fine teaching, and that would not have happened. I wouldn't have been able to afford it, and I wouldn't have been able to get that person's attention Perfect. Um, on such a regular basis for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. I consider that that time was a gift for me. Yeah, I understand. That's, that's quite an inspirational story. Thank you. Uh, how do you define success as an artist? It has to come from within. Um, you know, uh, I'm fortunate enough that um, I don't have to worry that my art pays the bills. Um, I'm at a place of giving myself my own voice, my own satisfaction, learning more about myself, expressing myself to others. And if they like it, it gives me gratification. So um, I, I, I'm able to do it for what we all would love art to be able to do for each of us. Good. Uh, how has your style changed through the years? My style is always evolving. Um, <laughs> and, and, and sometimes that's, a, that's good. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's not so good because galleries want to know who you are. Yeah. They want you to be a solid, recognizable um, artist. Okay. And that means you have to be very consistent. That is my um, challenge, to be consistent. Because, because I was an educator for so long, and I still identify as an educator, um, I'm constantly rethinking and wanting to improve and evolve and go into that next thing. So my art, if I had to say overall, is becoming looser and more abstract. Okay. Overall, it's becoming simpler in color palette. Overall. However, if you go and look at my body of work, you will see a rather eclectic mix of various styles and compositions and color palettes because I needed to try them all. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the goal is to land on something and I don't know if I want that goal for me, 
but I realized that to be recognized as a more professional artist, I will have to land on a style and look that's identifiable just to me. Um, and I'm hoping I'm evolving towards that as we speak. Okay. Okay, and now that leads, leads me to my next question. How do you seek out opportunities as an artist to show and sell your work? This is fairly new to me. Um, as I've e explained already, um, I didn't necessarily have the confidence until fairly recently to put myself out there and, and feel good about who I am regardless of what I get as feedback. I take all feedback, I want to listen to feedback, but I kind of use the Carl Sagan idea of who's giving me the feedback, what is it that they do, um, and how does that connect to other things I've heard or thought or felt. Um, so I'm selective on what I take in and what I process because I could so easily go in so many different directions. And as I've already indicated, I'd like to be able to be more linear in where I'm going as an artist to define that more solid look of mine. Now, um, I love that answer. What do, what do you enjoy most about participating in Ontario's Festival of Arts. What I, again, festivals are not things I do very often, but what I've really appreciated this, first of all, I was the principal of a school a few blocks away from here. Was it was school? just a Central Language Academy. Um, it, it was a um, K-6 um, traditional school that was having challenges. And I went in and made it a magnet school for teaching in three languages, English, Spanish, and Mandarin, and made it a K-8 because the program required it. And to this day, it has a waiting list. Um, and it is highly regarded throughout the entire area. So um, Ontario has, I have a strong connection and feeling towards Ontario. However, I will also say that the staff um, that I've interacted with, from the person who is the president of the council, who actually talked to me about coming into this festival, to the, muse the Chafee Community Museum that encouraged me, to um, Matt, which I knew Matt's last name, who is constantly networking with on email and making me feel very comfortable and phone calls when I had more detailed questions and he's already visited me today um, to introduce himself in person. Um, that kind of level of um, care, nurturing, support, we don't think of in the art world. It's, it's usually at least thought of as being business mm -hmm. and money. Um, and all I've gotten was a lot of wonderful warm support and encouragement, very human interaction. And um, that's what I need and want at this point in my life. Perfect, I'm really glad you feel that way. And uh, believe me, the festival appreciates your insight and thoughts about this. Two. And once again, give me your first and last name. Gorman Bentley. Thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. And on behalf of the Ontario Festival Arts 